Hello and welcome to Just Hoops. In today's video, we're going to talk about the New York Knicks and their new backcourt duo of Jalen Brunson and RJ Barrett. This duo was put together in hopes of the Knicks making another push to the playoffs like they did two years ago. And in this video, we're going to break down how this backcourt can work together and how each guy can bring success to the New York Knicks. We're going to start by talking about Jalen Brunson. Brunson signed with the Knicks this offseason to a four-year, $104 million deal, leaving the Dallas Mavericks and becoming the point guard of the future in New York. So we're going to dive into how he can fit in the Big Apple and what impact he can bring to help win in New York. We're going to look at his stats real quick, though. Average 16.3 points per game, 4.8 assists, 3.9 rebounds, shot 50 from the field, and an effective field goal percentage of 54.9. But one big stat that I don't have up here is his assist to turnover ratio is over three, which is elite. So now let's dive in the film and see how he can impact the Knicks. So one of the biggest impacting factors Jalen Brunson can bring to New York is his ability to create shots. So the Knicks were 23rd in terms of offensive rating last year and they were 25th in isolation, shot attempts, play types, in terms of points per possession. They need to get better at creating high quality looks offensively and a guy like Jalen Brunson who can attack mismatches, who can attack his position also with size and strength is definitely something that can really help them out and really help create good offensive looks consistently. So to talk more about Jalen Brunson, he is a great three level scorer. He's highly efficient. He does a great job on the interior at landing on two, being patient, being strong when finishing at the cup. He has the ability to finish with either hand. He has a really nice floater game. But the thing that really makes him special is that gray area, that mid range where he can land on two, pivot around, basically play out of the post. In those spots, he does a great job at creating space with his body, being physical at his position, and just being very patient, being poised, being collected with the ball in his hands. And one last thing I want to talk about is his pull-up jumper. He does a good job getting his feet under him, being set, elevating over the defense, getting great touch on the ball. All these things result in him being a high-level scorer and just the guy when things get murky offensively to give the ball to, allow him to work in space, operate, make plays at all three levels, and just go out there and give you a chance to score any given time down the floor. As a playmaker too, he can be huge in New York. His ability to just be smart with the ball in his hands, make smart, under control decisions consistently is huge in improving the offense. First, let's talk about the break though. He's somebody that can push the pace, go either direction, and then also play at his pace which allows guys to free up around him. He did a good job at finding rim runs, finding guys on the perimeter, hitting the trail, just operating space, scanning the floor, having his eyes up, just doing all these little things that allow him to see things develop around him, especially early in offense, and make these plays happen for his teammates. This, alongside a lot of these young, quick guys in New York, could be huge for New York in terms of producing more high-quality looks in transition. Now to talk about the half court a little bit, some things I really want to emphasize is his ability to make the simple play all the time, his pace and control in the half court in terms of making the offense roll, being that just stable presence on the floor to get the ball to allow him to play and make plays for his teammates. He's never rushed, really allows things to move and develop around him. He doesn't force plays to happen. And he's just so elite at, as a passer, being able to pass with either hand, being able to attack and make defenses rotate is just huge and could really help New York out. Now to talk about what makes Jalen Brunson elite is his play in the pick and roll. So the Knicks were in the bottom 10 last year in terms of the pick and roll offense. On Synergy, if you want a statistical analysis of it, they averaged 0.94 points per possession in their pick and roll offense, including passes which is just not good enough to be successful. Jalen Brunson can definitely come in, give them a lead guard presence that can control in the half court, make smart decisions, and just be an all-around guy that they could trust with the ball in his hands in these spots. These first clips, though, you can see his ability to score in these situations, pick up a switch, 
identify coverage, attack the hip, get downhill. And we already talked about his elite finishing ability. He just gets down there. He's big. He's physical. He'll land on two, be patient with it. And he's also able to get to the mid range, get to his pull up, make plays happen there. And he can also knock it down from three. If you go under that screen and give him space, he can get his feet down, rise up and knock it down from beyond the arc. But we're going to talk now about what made him special in the pick and roll, especially without Luca in the opening series against Utah. He showed his ability to play make his patience, his poise with the ball in his hands. He does a good job at setting up screens, identifying what the coverage is and just making them pay and finding the weak points in the defense. As a passer, he does a really good job of getting deep in the paint and making that cross court pass to the corner, making the plug pay at the rim. He does a good job at manipulating the defense with his eyes and his change of pace. He'll come off the screens hard, get in the paint, land on two, or put somebody in jail. That change of pace could be huge in making a defense pay for just over emphasizing the paint or even just over helping in general. I think Jalen Brunson in New York, in terms of his ability to play make out of the pick and roll and just be that guy that could be trusted with the ball in his hands, is going to be the biggest thing that he can bring to the Knicks right away. He'll be able to get downhill, play in the paint, have R.J. Barrett running off of him, have a Julius Randle spacing the floor, have Alec Burks, have Mitchell Robinson as the role man. All these really high-quality guys, along with the youth of Obi Toppin and Quentin Grimes playing around him, could all get better due to just Jalen Brunson being the guy with the ball in his hands, attacking, playing with pace, and making the smart decisions with the ball in his hands. Now let's talk about the other half of this duo, R.J. Barrett, who's already the superstar in the making in New York. Here are stats from last season. He averaged 20 points per game, 5.8 rebounds, 3 assists, shot 40 from the field, 71 from the line, and had an effective field goal percentage of 46.6. R.J.'s shooting numbers may have dipped last year, but his usage rate was much higher. He was given the keys to the offense last season. And now let's dive into the film and talk about how he can help bring winning back to New York. Starting with his elite attacking ability, RJ Barrett is a great athlete. His ability to run in the open floor, make plays in transition, is great at his size, his position. He's able to push it by himself. He's able to run the floor on play off of guys. I think that as a transition player, the more he's able to get in the open floor, make these easy plays happen, it could definitely help the Knicks out at just getting more offense and having these easier looks more consistently. And it also gives them a second guy that they can trust alongside Jalen. RJ showed it last year that if he got the ball on the break, he was able to do it, make plays happen, play off of guys. And I think adding Jalen Brunson, he's gonna just get more opportunities like this. But to talk about the half court, RJ is a physical driver. He does a great job at using his body, using his size, using his strength at getting downhill, bumping guys off. He's strong around the cup. He's an elite left-hand attacker, but he also showed the ability last year to use his right. The more he's able to improve at going both directions and making plays happen, finishing with either hand, getting bumped with contact and still finishing with his right and left, he will instantaneously put himself in a different spotlight, become more efficient from two-point land, and just become a guy that you can't let go in the paint, have to send bodies, have to send help, and it'll just open up the offense more. And one last thing I want to talk about in terms of his finishing ability is his touch around the rim. He has a really solid floater with his left hand, and I think he does a great job at using English to get it off the glass. His finishing ability is one of the best for his age and his position. I think that the sky's the limit in terms of his ability to make plays deep in the paint. So the thing about RJ's game that I think can make him evolve into that star that can play both ends of the floor is his ability to guard one-on-one. He had a defensive field goal percentage of 44.5, and that's really good. He held guys to under 50% from the field. He did a good job at using his size, his length. He had tough matchups, too. He had to guard Kevin Durant. He had to guard Jason Tatum. He's not in an easy division in the NBA in terms of matchups on a nightly basis, and he took those challenges head on. I think he has so much more room to grow at this end, but some things that he has shown is his ability to be physical. He does a good job at using his chest, using his strength, and really warding guys out of the paint. 
Another thing is his hand activity. I think he can even be more active, but he's already really good at keeping his hands out and wide, contesting shots, being in the passing lanes, and doing things like that. And lastly, he shows good effort. Under Coach Tibbs, he preaches defense, he preaches physicality, he preaches effort. I think RJ is bought in full heartedly, and he's going to continue to grow at this end of the floor due to the energy and effort he brings on a nightly basis as an individual defender and as a team defender. Now let's talk about the levels of growth in his game, starting with his spot up ability and ability to shoot from beyond the arc. Last season was a dip in his numbers. He did shoot a lot more tough ones off the bounce. He had defense more committed to him. But the previous season, he shot 40% 40, 40 from beyond the arc. And I think that he could do that again. And I think Jalen Brunson's going to be a huge part of him getting really quality looks from beyond the arc. He just has to capitalize on them. I think RJ Barrett could improve also in terms of just being able to be shot ready, get the shot off quicker, more efficiently. But I think he has a great foundation. He shot 40% one season. He knows what he can do. He has the capability of being out there, being a 40% shooter from beyond the arc. If he's able to space the floor around Julius Randle and around Jalen Brunson, I think this offense could definitely explode and be one of the better ones in the league and definitely in the top half. So now for an even bigger one is his play in the pick and roll as a ball handler. I think first and foremost, his playmaking ability as a passer was seen to have slight improvements throughout last season. He showed patience and poise with the ball as the season continued to go. He showed an ability to get downhill, be quick, but also patient with it in terms of making the right decision. He didn't rush things too often. Yes, he did attack first and foremost to score for himself, but he also was able to read the floor, identify where there were openings, and make smart, under control decisions with the ball. I think next year, being that secondary ball handler alongside Jalen Brunson, he's going to have to go out there, make these plays consistent, and he's also going to have another guy around him in which has to draw attention. It's going to be easier for him to get downhill and have scoring opportunities, but I'm also excited to see him as a passer. The more he grows in this area of his game, the more elite he's going to be and definitely just cause more havoc as an all-around offensive talent that can play make for his teammates and also create scoring opportunities for himself. Now we're going to talk about the himself part. In terms of scoring out of the pick and roll, he does a good job of being explosive, being that freak downhill athlete that could attack the paint and score with both touch and authority at the rim. I think the better he gets at exploding off of the screen, at first setting it up, coming off, and then getting downhill, finding that angle, being strong and physical, he's going to just continue to improve and get better and better looks in terms of being that pick and roll ball handler. But the thing that could really make him elite is continuing to grow at getting that mid-range shot, getting in that in-between range. I think Jalen Brunson could definitely help him get better at this and grow. And lastly, as he is such an elite attacker, if he's able to knock down that pull of three off of an under consistently, his game is going to improve exponentially and he's going to be so much harder to guard. So now let's talk about one way these two can fit together and potentially blossom in New York. I think both of them as inverted screen setters for each other in two man action could be deadly. RJ Barrett we'll talk about first. As he continues to grow as a spot up shooter, he'll have to have that threat as a pick and pop threat, but his ability to attack, he can catch it, rip the clothes out, go downhill, make plays happen deep in the paint. And I believe that Jalen Brunson as the playmaker and ball handler he is at, in the pick and roll, it's gonna just make these opportunities so much easier for RJ to set a screen, find space, and then make things happen once he has it. But Jalen Brunson last year already showed he's really good at being that inverted screen setter with Luka. He's able to set the screen, make contact, free up the ball handler, and also he knows where the space is, where to go, how to make plays happen. He can knock it down from three, he can knock it down from mid-range, and I think this will allow RJ to grow. It'll cause mismatches for RJ with smaller guys, and also it'll create good opportunities for Brunson to attack closeouts and make plays downhill in space. New York went out this offseason and brought in Jalen Brunson to bring a poised, controlled leadership role to this roster, and R.J. Barrett is a budding superstar in this league. These two guys together could potentially be huge and high level and produce a lot of wins in the future for New York. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, learned something about both Jalen Brunson and RJ Barrett individually and how they can play together. For more content like this, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll catch you in the next one.